Good morning. You look fabulous. <laughs> so I need to, I just need to give one uh, quick note before I start my remarks, and that is that I need you to understand that uh, Mr. Sanborn is older than I am, and you'll understand the import of that as we get into this talk here. So some of you know Mr. Sanborn by reputation. Uh, the uh, E. Charles Sanborn Visiting Fellows Program is in his honor. Uh, the speakers who come to school are here as a result of that fund. Some of you know him because you've seen him in the library. But um, I want to tell you three other things about him, and you'll understand why when I heard he was going to be the speaker today that I immediately contacted Dr. Carter and asked if I could introduce him. So three pieces of context. In the 1980s and 1990s, uh, Chuck Sanborn and Mr. Anthony and a gentleman by the name of Dudley Cotton were the intellectual center of this school. Uh, when you think about our most rigorous, interesting courses, Mr. Sanborn was at the middle of those courses. And if you could think for a moment about Puck without the yelling, then you would understand Mr. Sanborn in the 18, 1880s. That would be beautiful. <laughs> 1980s and 1990s. I think maybe even a better context for Mr. Sanborn is that he has held almost every different position at Dairyfield. Uh, headmaster, director of college planning, director of giving, teacher, coach, but here's a spectacular thing. He held all those positions at the same time. So in context, he was Dr. Carter, Mr. Barnard, right, and Pook all at the same moment. But here's the real reason I'm getting up here. This might be the best context for why I'm introducing Mr. Sanborn. If you've had me in class and you've been a little frustrated because my classes seem too unstructured, that there are too many loose ends, that my expectations are always about for you to reach your own conclusions and your own insights, and in fact, when there are days where you are confused the most, then you might thank Mr. Sanborn for that. Because you see, Mr. Sanborn was my high school teacher. And maybe almost 50 years ago, one of my only intellectual memories of high school, because it is a long time ago, is sitting in my dorm room uh, writing a paper, I might say yet another paper, and reaching an insight that I had never really considered. And that was pure Chuck Sanborn. So it is my pleasure to introduce my former high school teacher who is older than I am <laughs> as our Founders Day speaker, Chuck Sanborn. Can't you just imagine having him in class? <laughs> and I still stayed in the profession Thank you, Bruce. Always good to hear you most of the time. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've been in this situation and having to speak. And the older you get, sometimes the harder it gets. And I'm trying to uh, capture what Derryfield has meant to me in the space of maybe eight, 10 minutes, I don't want to keep you going too long. And how do you wrap all of those years up uh, in a few minutes? By getting started, I guess I want to thank Dr. Carter for all that she has done. And I want to thank uh, her for the opportunity to speak uh, this morning as we celebrate the founders. I want to uh, preface my remarks with a confession. I love dairy feel. No question about that. My uh, blood runs maroon and white. My 41-year relationship with Dairy Field, 28 as a faculty member and 13 as a volunteer, cheerleader, and spectator, have steadily deepened and reinforced my attachment to the school. That said, I like to think that I have maintained some objectivity. There are things at which the school has excelled. There are things that could have perhaps been done better. 
things left undone that perhaps should have been done and some things done that perhaps should have been left undone. There is one powerful constant through all my years at Dairyfield, and that is that Dairyfield has never ceased aspiring to provide young people with an educational experience that prepares them to live meaningful and fulfilling lives in a world characterized by increasingly rapid and complex change. In September of 1963, as I embarked on my teaching career at Mount Hermon School, Dairyfield was being incubated in several living rooms in Bedford. The goal of the Dreamers was to provide a top-notch independent day school college preparatory program option for students in Greater Manchester. You recall the story, but briefly, 39 families each contributed $1,000 to the cause and boldly and courageously the Dairyfield School was incorporated in 1964. In September of 1965, Headmaster Philip Hugney welcomed 105 students, though some say 108. Maybe there are some early dismissals uh, to the uh, uh, rent leased facilities at the Institute of Arts and Science in downtown Manchester. And the dream train left the station. By 1975, Dairyfield had survived the turbulent 60s, and turbulent they were, and the untimely death of Headmaster Hugney in 1969. However, a new campus had been built, and enrollment had grown, and it was definite that Dairyfield had a future. In the early 1970s, I had met with Dairyfield's second headmaster, Ralph Skozafava, at several independent school educational meetings. In the course of our conversation, swapping tales, sometimes lies maybe, but always truths, about our uh, respective schools, I learned a lot about this new school, Dairyfield, that was coming uh, to shape here in Manchester. Uh, and uh, at one point, I said, you know, Ralph, I've been in boarding schools for 12 years. I'm thinking uh, perhaps it might be good to switch to a day school environment. Uh, what grew from that was in the spring of 75, Ral Ralph asked me if I would consider joining the Dairyfield story. He said that the time was at hand to fully establish a development office, expand communications, and institute uh, a long-range planning study. I visited the campus to see if there might be a fit for me. The founder's vision for the Dairyfield School and the sense of community that I felt as I had conversations with faculty, students, and trustees confirmed my early inclinations that this could really be an exciting and rewarding venture for three to five years. Dairyfield, having survived its first decade, appeared poised to confidently enter a new chapter. I was confident that my personal and professional goals could flourish. And so to Dairyfield I came as a director of uh, planning and development. In the ensuing years, I combined teaching in the history department, coaching, and administrative responsibilities. A wonderful combination, I might add. AP US history and the senior elective images of humanity became my main courses, but then I also had the opportunity to offer some elective courses, such as introduction to macroeconomics and towards a more just and equal society, which gave us an opportunity uh, to look at the quest for first-class citizenship 
by African Americans, by women, and by Native Americans. Always exciting times. Where else could I talk uh, about and share ideas on uh, Camus, The Plague, on Waiting for Godot, Dante's Inferno? Stimulating times. It was a joy to teach and learn with engaged and engaging students and to work with a team uh, of teachers dedicated, enthusiastic, and skilled. One of them was Bruce Burke. Can you imagine Bruce as skilled, as enthusiastic? As a student at Mount Hermon, he was one of my favorites. One could not ask for more. I loved my coaching experiences at Dairy Field. At various times, I coached middle school basketball, middle school baseball, and varsity softball. Uh, in the late 70s, I had one of my signature experiences. I thought it was time for the middle school girls to have a basketball team, and so we uh, negotiated gym time and got a schedule going. And that team continues, I think, to hold a school record of being the only Dairy Field basketball team to ever be held scoreless in a game, 22 to nothing. But you know, those girls had a wonderful time. They had great spirit, they ne never stopped trying, and they kept improving. And the program improved, and uh, in 1964, uh, the middle school's girls team won the Amiskeg League Championship. At that point, I thought somebody else ought to take over so I wouldn't have to uh, face long afternoons again. Um, later, I came back and coached JV basketball, working with the iconic Ed Lemire, and also joined Ed as an assistant coach for the varsity softball team. Coaching and teaching what wonderful ways to interact with students in and out of the uh, classroom. What a wonderful way to get to know them. It was a gift. My administrative roles changed periodically. In 1980, Bill Pfeiffer, the third headmaster, asked if I would assume the position of uh, director of studies as he was reorganizing uh, the administration. And then to that uh, position, I would be responsible for administering all aspects of the academic program. In 1985, Mark Hurlbut, Dairyfield's fourth headmaster, asked me to take over responsibility for the college advising program and I served as director of college planning for 17 years. I focused on developing the breadth and depth of our college advising program, expanding services we provided to students and parents, growing the number of colleges visiting Dairyfield, and personally visiting many colleges and universities throughout the United States. What I was doing was spreading the gospel of Dairyfield. I wanted the colleges and universities and the world out there to know more about Dairyfield, the kind of terrific students that came to the school, the educational program that they were uh, having, and uh, of the success of Dairyfield students in a variety of college settings. With the outstanding and insightful assistant of then registrar Karen Pearson Goodwill, current registrar Susan Flagg, Betty Gibson, and Bruce Burke, we carried out Mark Hurlbut's charge. Working with students throughout the college planning process was a priceless experience and one that I will forever cherish. There simply is no way uh, to explain what it's like to sit down with a young person thinking about his or her future and steps to achieve that future. In the spring of 1993, following Mark Hurlbut's resignation, which was to be effective on December 31 of that year, 
I was asked by the trustees to serve as interim headmaster while Mark was away frequently throughout the fall and until a new head of school would be appointed for July 1st. I accepted. It was a very stimulating and rewarding year as we made preliminary studies of adding a sixth grade and a building expansion that led the way uh, under Nancy Bodiger Stern's leadership to the dynamic transformation of the middle school. We had a fond farewell to uh, Mark and prepared a warm welcome for Nancy as she became uh, the fifth head of school. I'm going to take a little digression here for one story. I was teaching a class to the eighth graders growing up in America, and I was asked uh, in the spring, Mr. Samborn, can't we go down to Colonial Williamsburg? And I said, yeah, I guess so. How many of you want to go? Well, about 11 students wanted to go to Colonial Williamsburg. And uh, one of the students had an uncle in Silver Springs, Maryland, where we could just spend the night. Another one had uh, a uh, uh, grandparent uh, living in Richmond, Virginia, and we could camp out in the backyard there and drive uh, over to Williamsburg each day. And uh, so I said, okay, let's do it. And this was a different day and age. The school had one silver van, an old Ford known as the Silver Bullet. It could tell quite a bit, uh, history of Dairyfield if it could talk. And so on a Saturday morning, I met 11 students, all with their duffel bags, um, in the parking lot. It was about 5.30 or 6 o'clock. I had no permission slips, I had no cell phones, I had no uh, colleague with me, and off we went. And um, all the time I just was counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and they always came out at eleven. Uh, and, uh, they, they slept out in the yard at those two homes. We went down to Williamsburg. I let them loose during the day. We'll meet at 12 o'clock. They were always back for lunch. And um, uh, it, it was just a wonderful, wonderful experience. We headed home and we got stuck in a traffic jam and two of the boys said, I've got to go to the bathroom. And they ran off and went up the hill, and as they were running up the hill, the traffic started to move. <laughs> so we had to think, how are we ever going to get back? And so I crept along, and then they came sprinting down the hill, running at an angle, and met with me and jumped in the van. And we all got home safely. But it was just a wonderful, wonderful experience that they cherished, and I cherished, and uh, it would be a hard time having that experience of going off without permission slips and so forth today. So that's just one of those stories. Since my retirement in 2003, I have been asked, what is it about Dairyfield that keeps drawing you back? My response is simply, I had a super invigorating and stimulating 28 years deeply involved in the coming age of this exceptional school. I was privileged to work with dedicated, skilled, inspired, and inspiring colleagues and students, and with families who care deeply about their children and the importance of education. In a school that was always looking into the future, always establishing its identity, always dedicated to young people. Why wouldn't I want to keep coming back to a school that had provided me with a multitude of treasured experiences in and out of the classroom? Again, why wouldn't I want to stay connected to a school that sponsors the outstanding breakthrough program, 
exceptional theater productions such as Phantom of the Opera, musical concerts of top quality such as the most recent spring concert, and a vast array of outstanding athletic events just right for a sports junkie, and a school that is continually building its leadership program, its community service opportunities, and global travel opportunities. In 2003, I retired from teaching at Dairy Field. I did not retire from Dairy Field. You got the distinction? My post-teaching involvement has included being a library volunteer, organization of archival materials, which has taken me deep into the history of Dairy Field, fascinating, serving on the 40th and 50th anniversary committees, supporting the Advancement Office Annual Fund activities, participating in the recent strategic uh, planning process, and accepting the invitation to join the Board of Trustees. All these involvements have left my life energized and enriched. And with the de de uh, dynamic leadership of Dr. Carter, outstanding faculty and staff and outstanding students, uh, the founders and alums of Dairy Field can feel very confident about the future. There is a spirit at Dairy Field that transcends space and time, a spirit that connects past, present, and future generations. And that is so important for a culture at a time when change is so rapid, so deep, and so fundamental. How do you hold a society, a community together? The spirit of Dairyfield holds this community together. That spirit is rooted in the ongoing mission of Dairyfield that currently reads, the Dairyfield School inspires bright and motivated young people to be their best and provides them with the skills and experiences needed to be valued, dynamic, purposeful members of any community. The programs designed to implement that mission will change as realities change. That's the way it should be. But the mission continues to be a, a lasting legacy of the founders, a legacy that has been the foundation of Dairy Field for 51 years and will continue to bind us together in the coming years. It is the spirit that makes us Dairyfield. Thank you.